problem number 71, we want to evaluate the limit. Limit as x goes to pi of cosine squared of x plus 3 cosine of x plus 2 over cosine of x plus 1. All right, and <clears throat> something that can be a little bit intimidating at times by a problem like this is you see trig functions, and it's kind of like, wait a second, trig functions are hard. Uh, but we don't need to worry about trig functions yet because we just need to ask the most basic question, and that is, well, can we plug in pi? Or do we get division by zero if we plug in pi? So before we worry about any of the details, let's just say, can I even plug pi in? And if I plug in pi for x, I get cosine of pi, which is negative 1, plus 1 is 0. So in fact, I do get division by 0, so I'm going to have to do something else. Well, what could I do? Uh, the first thing we usually think of in cases like this is, well, can I factor the thing at all? And the answer here actually is yes, you can factor. And try to think about this for just a second as if cosine of x itself were a variable. So let's say that cosine of x were something like t, let's say. So if cosine of x were equal to t, now, I'm not suggesting that you necessarily have to write something like this down, like I'm doing right here. I'm just showing you, how do I think about it? It's like, if cosine of x were some other variable, then would I feel comfortable factoring this thing? And I think you would find very quickly that, in fact, I would feel comfortable. Because let's look what happens. Then we get the limit as x goes to pi of t squared plus 3t plus 2 divided by t plus 1. And now we're back to a problem that we're very comfortable with and that we've done lots and lots of times. So if we factor this, we get the limit as x goes to pi of, if I factor the top, I get t plus 2 times t plus 1 over t plus 1. But remember what t was. Let's rewrite it. This is the limit as x goes to pi of t plus 2, which is cosine of x plus 2, times t plus 1, which is cosine of x plus 1, divided by cosine of x plus 1. So I just plug back in for t again. Now, these two steps, you might say, not needed. You could jump right to this one if you can recognize that cosine of x can be treated as a variable itself. Okay, now we can cancel the cosine x's plus 1, and all we're left with is the limit as x goes to pi of cosine of x plus 2. Now I get no division by 0 if I plug in the pi. I plug in the pi. Cosine of pi is minus 1. So I just get minus 1 plus 2, which is so the limit as x goes to pi of cosine squared of x plus 3 cosine of x plus 2 over cosine x plus 1 is 1.